What's going on, everybody? I'm just gonna wait till uh, till a few more people show up. <clears throat> uh, we'll see how many people we can get, and then I'll start. Basically, what I'm trying to do. What's going on, Rosario? Rosario. Basically, what I'm gonna try to do is I'm just gonna try to improvise, and I'm gonna try to call out what I'm what I'm trying to do in real time. Okay. We got uh, we got a few chords in this in this little progression. If you guys can hear it, can you guys hear me by the way? Basically, it's B minor. Then it goes to E. Then we got A. And then D. Okay, one more time. That's B minor. E. A. And D major. Now, I'm in the key of F sharp minor. Okay? I'm in the key of F sharp minor. The relative major of F sharp minor is A. So there's a few scales that I can use here. I could start improvising over the F sharp minor pentatonic in all the five F sharp major, or sorry, F sharp minor pentatonic shapes, there's five of them. You can also use the F sharp minor hexatonic uh, scale shapes, but if we go to the relative major, the relative major is A, I can also use the modes of the A major scale. So I can use the A major scale. Okay, and all the modes in between. So that would be B, uh, B Dorian, C sharp Phrygian, D Lydian, Right, etc., etc. He makes a lady in. Um, I can also use the minor scale for F sharp. Now, aside from that, I can also use triads uh, and a bunch of other things as well. If I just use triads, or if I try and even forget about triads, but just outlining the chord shapes. Remember where the chords were: B minor, E, A, and D. I'm just gonna try doing that. And we'll see what that sounds. Like. Okay, here we go. E. A. And D. Now all I'm doing is going through the chord shapes. Okay, very basic, but it sounds great. Now, if I know my scales all around that, I can use these shapes for each of the scores as a skeleton, and then improvise around that using the notes from the scales. So for example, for my first chord B minor, I'm gonna use the notes from the B minor shape, and then I'm gonna go into pentatonic. E, A. One more time. B, D. Okay, so all I did was I outlined B minor and then finished it off with a bunch of notes from the F sharp minor pentatonic or any of the other five shapes wherever I am, whatever position I'm in. Okay? So I'm going to improvise a little bit and I'm going to use that same concept where I'm just kind of going through the chord shapes or not really the chord shapes but outlining the main notes from the chords in whatever shapes I know. So I know I have B minor here, I have B minor here, I have B minor here, and then all the other voices I know of B minor in all the other chords. And I'm going to try to fill in those blanks using those from either the A major modes or the F sharp minor pentatonic scale in all five shapes. Here we go. Following those, those uh, the chord progression is really going to give me notes that fit perfectly over the chords. Now, in that, when I'm writing all my melodies, when I'm writing my songs, when I'm trying to improvise, in real time, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find and listen for a certain melody that I can play in there and repeat. So I'm going to try doing the same thing, following the chords, and I'm going to look for a melody that I can repeat. What am I doing there? 
I got B minor. Going right into the E chord. And again, I'm just following just basic, basic chord shapes. Like this is the open E that everybody knows, right? From there, I'm going to uh, A. And then I outline D major. Just again, just a basic D major shape. Okay, the only thing that was, I guess, different was B minor, which is doing a bar chord. Okay, let's try that one more time. E. A. D. B higher. E. A. D. Make sense? Does that make everything a little bit easier? And from there, you can add everything else. You can add like, it doesn't have to be just pentatonic. You can use the modes, you can use everything else. And that's just one concept of improvising or finding melodies, kind of outlining the chord shapes. From there, you can also use triads or peggios. You don't even have to do that. You can just use your ears and go through the scale and just look for notes. And aside from all that, you can also just shred using just really just sequences really oh, most of the time when I'm shredding. So I'm doing just going up and down using sequences. And sequences are just patterns within the scales. This would be a very simple uh, sequence in the F sharp minor pentatonic. questions let me know you know below or if you're watching live just say something here but I'll probably save this video so just write your questions in the comments and I'll try and answer all those chord melodies what about chord melodies Thanks man, I appreciate that. Incorporating chord melodies in those solos. Basically, it's it's less uh, chord melodies, so not actually, because I have distortion, I can't just play full chords, because it can sound a little bit too much, a little bit too full. But what I'm trying to do is just outline the chords that I would have played if I am doing a chord melody type of solo, right? So I know my four chords, B minor, E, and it goes to A, and then D. As long as I outline those notes and add some notes from other skills like the pentatonic of the major, it, you can get some really cool stuff out of that. I'll give you an example. Okay, so here's D. B minor. E. A. B.
Does that make sense? Scales are concepts that you gravitate to are my favorites. Um, a lot of it has to do with the hexatonic scale. I've talked about that a lot in some of my other videos. I also have a full master class on that. I'll play the hexatonic scale over this, over this chord progression, just so you can see what it is. So I'm just gonna do the first position of F sharp minor, but I'll go to an octave higher. perfectly over everything and that's that's the greatest thing about that scale is you can use it all the time so if I improvise a little just using that scale over the support progression it sounds great What else? Other concepts that I go to is uh, a lot of sweet picking in between some of my playing. And when I say sweet picking, I don't mean like like full like five or six string sweeps. I mean little three, two to three string sweeps in between everything I'm playing, so in the scales. And a lot of it again has to do with the hexatonic scale. If I go through that scale again, I have little arpeggios in between those. That one, that one, and these. Now. As I'm improvising, I'll try sweeping those instead of actually alternate picking those. Right there. Up, 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 down. So that's a little sweep. And it sounds a lot smoother than if I were to like alternate pick it. it. Sounds a little bit more harsh, right? So I'm trying to get that smoother tone. Something like that. What do you practice every day? Um, yeah, it really is. I'm just adding that nine. For, in terms of practicing, I don't practice too much like a certain concept. What I'll do practice is I might practice trying to get faster, some speed type stuff. But usually I'm just trying to record a lot of uh, different content from YouTube and um, for Instagram and stuff. And if I come up with a melody that I can't play, I'll practice that. So yesterday I came up with something, I, I don't really remember it. It was like a slide in an arpeggio and I just couldn't get it in time. I couldn't get it fast enough. And it's not even the speed, even slow, I couldn't get it. My fingers were all jumbling up. And it usually never happens to me. So that's something I kind of worked on. So what I'll do usually when I'm practicing is I'll just sit there over a track. I'll improvise, okay? And as I'm improvising, I'll just kind of go with the flow until I mess up. And if I messed up while improvising, to me that means it's something that I'm probably going to try and do again, okay? Because usually when you're improvising and you're in the flow, you're just letting your fingers kind of go through the movement. And if I went to try and do something and I messed it up pretty bad and I couldn't quite get it, that means it's something that my fingers wanted to do and I just couldn't get it. So what I'll do is I'll stop the track and I'll just practice that little bit until I get that down. And then I'll try again, I'll improvise and I'll try to introduce that as much as I can. I feel like that's a great benefit of uh, just kind of sitting there improvising and when you mess up, practice that. Are you conscious of the first measure of the beat every time? Yes, I'm conscious of every single measure of every beat. I know exactly what chord I'm on every time I'm playing. Anyways, I hope I cleared things up. Um, I'll provide a little bit more, and then I'm out of here. If you have any more questions, let me know.
arpeggios just have to do with the chords that I'm playing. So I know that the arpeggios are 1 flat 3, or 1 3 5, and if I'm adding the 7, the 7 as well, whatever chord I'm playing. So in terms of a key, I try to find um, the diatonic arpeggios or chords that pertain to that key, and then I'll break down those arpeggios. So in this song, the first chord is B minor. I know I got my B minor shape, and a lot of times if you're looking for an arpeggio and you're not sure exactly what the notes are, just play the chord. A lot of times an arpeggio is just breaking down the chords, we're just adding one or two notes that aren't quite in the shapes, but are, are there inside that chord as well. So either a minor chord or the minor seven. So for B minor, what I'm gonna do, I got my shape, I know it's gonna be some of these notes, but I'm gonna add two notes at the top and two notes at the bottom to kind of close it off. So instead of just, it's gonna go, Now I can do that everywhere. That's just starting on the A root, right? My, my root was on the E, so I can do the same thing here. I know my bar chord B minor, so I know it's gonna be one of these notes, or all these notes, but I'm also gonna add one more note at the bottom, and one more note at the top, so I get this. And I can do that for every chord, okay? Let's try that real quick. How do you do horizontal arpeggios? What do you mean by horizontal arpeggios? I don't know what you mean by that. Like going across this way? Like this, for example? I don't know if I can do that. Something like that? Is that what you're talking about? So all I'm doing there is I'm just running through the arpeggios for every single one of those chords. E major, sorry, A, and D. B, E, A. B, 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 A. Oh, so these ones, the ones that go across, um, actually, you know what? I got a very simple trick for that. I'll tell you this one little trick, and then uh, I'm gonna go. So basically what I'm doing is, I'm playing a one, three, five, okay? On the first two strings. So for F, bleh, for F sharp minor, it's gonna be second fret, fifth fret, and the fourth fret on the A string. So I'm going one, flat three, and five, which are my first three notes of an arpeggio, or any arpeggio, one, three, five. Now, I wanna continue to play that across all six strings going horizontally, right? Just like you asked. So this is what I'm gonna do, and it's a very simple concept. What you gotta do is you gotta find the octaves of that first note. So I have the first note here, I have the octave of that on the fourth fret of the D string, and I have the octave of that note on the seventh fret of the B string. And what you wanna do is you wanna be able to find these octaves wherever you are all the time. If you can quickly jump from all these octaves, then you'll be able to do this concept that I'm about to show you. Sorry, I'm a little bit sick, that's why I'm stuffy, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the one, three, five in this first position, jump to the octave, play it again, jump another octave, and do it again. So when you put all that together, you get this massive arpeggio going across the whole guitar neck. Okay, now you can do that with everything. This is just a minor arpeggio going one, flat, three, five. What if I wanted a major seven arpeggio? Okay, so that's my major seven arpeggio. I'm gonna repeat that over here in octave higher, and octave higher over here. Put all that together and you get. How wicked does that sound? And really all I'm thinking about, I'm not thinking about this massive like arpeggio or this massive lick. All I'm thinking about is going and then repeating that in octave higher, another octave, and then backwards. Take away all those pauses and you get. Now within that, the cool thing is you can add little patterns. You don't just have to go up and down that. You can add little patterns and uh, move around, go up, go down, go whichever way, and then you get stuff like this. Does that make sense? I'll try and do that over the track. Let's put the track on again, and I'll see if I can do that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this one. 
the one I just showed you, which is just an A major 7 arpeggio. Here we go. Sense. Where do you make your back tracks? I make my backing tracks on uh, Ableton Live. Awesome man, it reminds me of Tomo's lesson, but with more spice. Cool man, appreciate that. I shouldn't put the track back on because I don't want to do that simple part. Um, the only effects I got is just reverb, reverb and delay, really, and I'm just using the bias effects software. And that's it. You guys want to see what that looks like? I can put, I can load that up on the screen real quick. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Let's capture that bias effects. Let's see if I can get that up, and I'll show you exactly what effects. It is. Wasn't it? Um, yeah, I don't think I can do that right now. Oh, yeah, I can. Okay, hold on. Just give me a second and I'll load that up. Okay, tell me if you can see this. You guys see that? Okay, so this is basically this is basically what I'm using. Um, this is my lead crunch voice sound. I got a compressor at the beginning. I got a drive. I got a splitter that splits this into two amps. I got the Joe Bonamassa amp, and I have a Dumble clone. In between that, I have a chorus. Let me just turn off that backing track. It's getting annoying, but that chorus. gives a little bit of a wider sound. So if I turn that off, it's a little bit more like right in your face. I turn that on, it gets a little bit wider, it gets a little bit nicer. I got two delays on each side. I got a delay going to the left, I got a delay going to the right. Let's listen to it with the delay. Can you hear that? It's very subtle, not too much. If I turn those off, all you hear is a reverb. It's very, very dry. So I turn those on. I got my mixer. On my mixer, I got the first amp, 32 to the right. The other amp, 29 to the left. Just to give it a little bit of an offset type of sound. Um, and then I have the first one delayed at, what is that, 0 0.375 milliseconds. Um, and basically what that does is it gives it a little bit of a wider angle because I have one going to the left and one to the right but they're not playing at the exact same time it sounds a lot wider than it actually is okay um, let me show you the difference so this is wide right now right with a little bit of a delay and if there's no delay I'll bring it all the way down it's very subtle but it's a little bit more in your face right mm -hmm. yeah it's bias effects uh, what was it at? 37? There we go. Okay, and then I have a little bit of EQ. EQ just gets my sound. Let me show you what it sounds like without the EQ. It's a little bit more dry. It gives it a little bit more life. Actually, this should be pushed up a little bit. I don't know why these are so low. But I might have been recording with the sound, so that's what it worked. And then the reverb. I actually don't really use this reverb too much. I can actually replace this with the other one has some weird noises sometimes and I can choose between plate, hall, chamber and room. I usually either go hall or plate 
I'll show you how. I'll turn the delays off so you can get the full effect of. That's a lot of here. Okay. And that's pretty much my sound. And I have tons and tons and tons and tons of presets. These are all presets that I've made. I got song presets, stuff for the master class. Um, Roy Brand New, Roy Brand New 2, Song 3, Song 3 intro. These are all intros to different songs. I have Bank 2, a bunch of sounds that I took from people. Bank 1, I got all these sounds that I made. Where are they? These are some of the first sounds I made. Roy 2 Layer, Roy Tone 3 EQ, EQ Pen, 45 Delay, 55, 65 Brighter. I'm not very good at naming sounds, obviously, but... Okay, let me turn this off and go back to your questions. Oh, my bad, I just shut it off. Um, okay, what were you guys saying? Uh, what effects do you use? Any tips on Matthias Asado style? <laughs> no, I can't play like Matthias Asado, man. Is that a garage band? No, it's by effects. If you haven't tried Chorus with the lay time knob, then you need to try it. I sure will, man. Give that a try. Are you going to more guitarist covers in the future? Maybe. What covers do you guys want? What other scales do you suggest learning after pentatonic? After pentatonic, I suggest checking out the hexatonic scale. I'll put a link below once I save this video up. But if you go to jtcguitar.com, you can get my master class on the hexatonic scale. And I take you everything from the beginning shape, and just learning the five shapes of the hexatonic, to all the arpeggios that are built in, plus all the patterns that you can play, all the different ways you can move it across the neck, adding sweet picking, adding everything. It goes from beginner, intermediate to advanced. It has everything in there. Um, and it's a great scale. From there, I would learn the modes. Okay, modes of the major scale. There's seven of those. Once you get those down, I would suggest learning chromaticism, adding chromatics in between the pentatonic, hexatonic, and the modes and all that. And once you have all that down, then I think the next thing would be arpeggios and stuff. But if you want more scales, check out the modes of the melodic minor scale. Okay, some of the stuff that you can do with the melodic minor scale is going to sound more jazzy, but it sounds like this. Cool. Uh, what do you think about fuzz? Fuzz is a little bit too fuzzy for me sometimes. I don't really use it unless like the song calls for it, but so far I don't think I've ever used it in anything in any recordings. I'm pretty sure you could play a buckethead. <laughs> Maybe. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Anyways, any other questions? Let me know in the comments. I'll probably save this video. Damn, that was a long live. What was that? 28 minutes? 29 minutes? Um, I'll improvise one last time. And then I'm out of here. I, know I said that like a million times, but... Bam, 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 bam.